Hey everybody, welcome to another Off The Shelf Board Game Review. This week we're looking at Raid and Trade by Mage Company. It's a game for 3-5 to five players, it's going to play anywhere from about 90 to 120 minutes. Now in Raid and Trade, the post-apocalypse has happened, World War III occurred, and pretty much most of mankind has been decimated. Luckily, one last bastion of society, the Golden City, has been created, and all of our players are working competitively to be the last person let into the Golden City while everybody else is left in languish in this post-apocalypse civilization of ruin and devastation. Players can gain access into the Golden City in one of three ways. First thing complete, be the first person to complete three quests for the Golden City, showing just how valuable they can be by willing to help out the Golden City and all its occupants. The next thing they can do is they can prove just how skilled of a laborer they are by getting to become the most skilled player, proving to the Golden City that they are a very valuable member and they should definitely be let in into this futuristic society so that they can survive the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Or finally, they can just prove just how much of a wonderful person they are by slowly working up their fame, working up their favor to become obviously a very powerful person who must be led in the Golden City because they're very favored by the rest of the residents. The interesting thing about this game though is that this is a very asymmetrical game that has very random layouts and it's going to play differently basically every time you play it. And of course it wouldn't be called raid and trade without a lot of raiding and a lot of trading between all of our players. Every one of our players is going to get a player board which is going to be very asymmetric. Every single player also gets a die that happens to go along with their player board that's going to give them special different powers and special different abilities that's going to allow every one of these players to play just a little bit differently. Additionally, they each have access to cards that only they can access, which are going to give them different inventions that they can build, which fit in with each one of their themes. For example, you have Carter. He's a former law enforcement officer. He can build things such as guns. He can build things such as armor and stuff to make him more of an offensive player. And then you have players such as Garcia, who's more of a trader. He can do things that allow him to trade more, to have more power in the trading, and also become more skilled. And finally, you have Maya, who's the medic, and she can do things like use her medical knowledge to give her more additional actions as she interacts with the other players across the board. As the game plays out, players are going to be moving across the board and interacting with all these different buildings across the board and searching these buildings, basically raiding them, trying to get the supplies they need to get into the Golden City. Every one of these buildings is going to give them the opportunity to raid every one of these buildings for some various supplies. But players have to be very, very careful when they're raiding some of these buildings because occasionally the guards from the Golden City are out patrolling the wasteland and if they catch you raiding these buildings, you're basically going to lose fame and fortune with them because they're going to realize you're not really somebody they want to be part of their society. So you have to kind of judge and balance all your actions. Do you want to do the raiding to gain the extra materials you need to possibly win the, way by, win the game by one of the other routes available to you? Or do you want to show them as they're patrolling the cities that you're not a terrible guy and not really raid these buildings while you're being watched and move on to do other things but of course that wastes your actions and allows the other players to possibly get ahead of you by gaining the resources so you kind of have a balance and a juggling act there and you also have the additional difficulty because as players are raiding all these buildings the buildings are going to be available to raid it are going to start dwindling the supplies are going to be start diminishing and you're going to start noticing that the amount of supplies the players have access to is just not going to be available anymore because all the supplies are going to disappear. And that's where we're going to get to the second part of the game where we get into the raiding, where players are going to, have to start actually interacting with each other, fighting each other, using their special combat die that is unique to every single player, matching their theme, give them extra special abilities, and players are going to, have to start fighting each other to get all of these resources that are slowly dwindling and falling away and being removed from the game. Players are going to continue to work around the board, this very modular board that is going to change every time you play it. It's a double sided board, there's a back side that's a wasteland that's going to have different rules and different set rules and finally if you don't want to work towards the Golden City there's one additional scenario you can play where all the players are fighting to be the first to get aboard this helicopter, fix the helicopter with all the supplies they managed to scavenge and escape from this devastated wasteland and try to survive for another day. Now there's no zombies in this game, there's no mutants in this game, but the enemy is the other players who are trying to stop you from surviving, gaining access to the Golden City, or maybe just flying away on this helicopter to survive in this post-apocalypse future. Additionally, on top of all this, players are going to have various encounters across the board as they explore the board, and much like Fallout, you even get a dog to have access to, and not only that, there's also going to be global events that are going to be happening every single turn, Global events such as things as ceasefires are being called because the city, the Golden City has said that there's no more war, you must start being friendlier with each other. There may be extra patrols going across the city preventing you from raiding these buildings 
or you may just have everybody attacked by some ruthless thug who decides to steal all of your supplies. Can you make it through, survive this post-apocalypse future, get the supplies you need to possibly complete these quests, become a skilled person, or just become a paragon of the Golden City, that is Raid and Trade. Now, if you have any comments or questions, you can always leave them in the YouTube comments down below. You can also feel free to email me at off the shelf board game reviews. That's otsbgr at gmail.com. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more, and as always, thanks for watching.